live from sunny Kent, Ohio. It is 3.58 p.m. on March 25th, 2020. I am your host, Mr. Price, and today we are going to talk about the Crusades, a little bit about the First Crusade, the Second Crusade, and the Third Crusade. They are the first three, the main three Crusades. There will be some after, but they are not as significant as one, two, and three. So today we'll jump into that. Um, Hope everyone is ready to roll with their guided notes, um, and we can go ahead and get started. So uh, the Turks' livelihood um, the way of life be- be- between being Muslims, between um, spreading out their culture west, they-, they started threatening the Byzantines. They started getting very, very close to um, Byzantine area, their-, their territory. Okay, so the Crusades was a response to the Turks. The, the Turks were getting closer, and the Byzantines needed to respond to them. And a response is like to, an answer to something that is done. All right. Uh, if, if someone, let me think of an example here. Um, it, it, say you're playing football. If, if a team keeps running the ball every single play, the response to that would be bringing all your fo- all, all your linebackers and your safeties in to try to stop the run. That would be a response. Um, and the response for the Turks marching west is the Byzantines trying to um, start this crusade, these battles against the Turks. Uh, the Turks, again, we're getting a little too close too close to Byzantine, too close to comfort. They were with, uh, within 100 miles of the capital of Constantinople. Remember, this is the Eastern Roman Empire, is the Byzantines. Uh, they moved their capital um, about uh, like 600 years earlier to, to uh, Constantinople, which is um, right where the star is. It is later named Istanbul. So the Pope... A little bit details about the meeting they had. They invited people from all over, um, all all religious figures, all the nobles to this meeting. They needed to discuss what needed to be done. Uh, a noble is a, a member of of a higher class. They, so he, the Pope called for all the important people to get over here. The meeting was happening in France. They're like we need to discuss what we are going to do. As we talked about previously, they wanted to reclaim the Holy Land. That became the ultimate goal, and and Jerusalem being the heart of this Holy Land of Palestine. So the city of Jerusalem is the ultimate goal. Um, so he, the Pope's like, hey, we're gonna make you some promises. Um, I, I speak to God. I, I'm the, I communicate with God, and he says that all sins will be forgiven if you fight. For a holy land, even if you have to kill, all sins will be forgiven, so we can get the holy land back for Christianity. So that uh, that speech uh, really sold people. They're like, "Okay, yeah, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to forgive. Um, have all my sins be forgiven." So peasants, uh, townspeople, even the you know knights that were already in the army, they all joined together here to fight. So uh, before they left, they would start making shields, start making armor with this um, red cross symbol. All right, this is the symbol of the Crusades for Christianity. This is their their inspiration to fight, to not forget. This is all for God. This is all our destiny. Our sins we will not have to worry about because this is what we're supposed to do. All right, it was located on many shields, on on weapons, on. Um, all the soldiers had this red cross. And if you ever see something in a museum or that logo anywhere, you think of the Crusades because that's where it is from. Uh, the Fighting was viewed as an act of love. Like, hey, I'm fighting because I love God. I have a devotion to God. I, I am committed to my religion of Christianity. And fighting was viewed as a good thing. Uh, it's you don't really think of love and fighting in the same sentence in the same vein but here during the crusades these people 
uh, on both sides but be really believe that this is for love and this is for their their god so um it, it's sometimes it's hard to wrap your head around but that was the honest truth that they believed in So the first crusade started in the year 1096, uh, about uh, 1,025 years ago. Um, so in the year 1096, and it lasted for about three years, the first one at least. So 100,000 soldiers head over to Palestine from Europe, okay? Um, and they ended up capturing the city of Ant Antioch, uh, Syria. And so that happened in 1098. So they had some success early on. They got over into Syria. Um, they, they kind of caught the, the Turks off guard. The C Crusaders were able to surround Jerusalem in 1099. And um, they had the city surrounded. There was not much protection outside of these walls. So the soldiers, for the, the Christian soldiers, scaled the walls. They got inside the city and they started fighting. The fighting lasted for about a month, and the Christians were victorious. They killed the most enemies. Um, they were able to take the city, and they established four different kingdoms throughout this Middle East area. We have um, the Byzantine Empire and Turkey over here, but these this area was all the different uh, kingdoms that they were able to... Uh, establish after the Christians were able to take back the Holy Land in the First Crusade. Um, so the reason why the Christians were able to be so successful during the First Crusade is because Muslims had a, an issue joining together. All right, they were disorganized. Uh, they didn't have a plan. Uh, people had their own agenda. They were like, "Well, I'm doing it this way," and someone else was like, "Well, I'll do it this way." Uh, so it was very disorganized. That was the biggest issue: not having, be, not being able to join together. Okay, um, I'll use another sports reference. If you have uh, a certain playbook, a play calls, you know exactly what you're doing, and everyone's on the same page, and it's easier to play. But if everyone has never played with each other and there's no plays, there's a lot of chaos. And that's kind of what the Muslims were um, dealing with during the First Crusade. So they started to band together. They started to come up with a plan together. And during the Second Crusade, uh, they captured one of the four Crusade cities. So one of the four um, areas that the, the Christians established um, during the First Crusade, uh, Muslims were able to capture so here come the Christians again during 1146 to 1148 to try to take back one of their holy cities. Um, so the Second Crusade was an absolute failure for, for the Christians. Um, Germany and France were the people that really uh, started sending soldiers. Most of the soldiers came from these two areas. Um, they weren't obviously Germany and France back then. It was just from that area. Um, but the organized uh, Muslims pushed them back. Some or the organization just made such a difference that these um, these soldiers from Germany and, so and soldiers from France weren't able to do anything. The armies ended up having to retreat because they were having such little success during the Second Crusade. Uh, before I move on here, there's a picture of a um, throw a Frank uh, soldier here um, from France. We, we refer, refer to as Franks with his throwing axe. It was specialty for the for the Frank army. All right, so we're moving on to the Third Crusade, which is another 40 to 50 years later. Uh, the Middle East Muslims were now under one leader. Uh, it makes such a difference going from everyone doing their own thing to actually having one uh, proven leader now. And the leader was Saladin. And uh, he formed a huge Muslim empire. He was able to unite everyone. He was able to um, get everyone on the same page. Everyone respected Saladin. He was a polite man. He, um, he, he showed respect. And he was very intelligent. So he easily recaptured Jerusalem from the Christians, which 
shocked Europeans. They couldn't believe that they, they just got uh, the uh, Holy Land that they just recaptured 100 years later earlier uh, is now gone. So, you guessed it, a third crusade will begin uh, from, the, from Europe to send troops over to recapture Jerusalem once again. So, um, King Richard of England was the one that organized this third crusade, his third attack, and he's known as the Lion Heart. Uh, I'll, I'll let you think to yourselves here why he might be called the Lion Heart. What, what kind of person would be nicknamed the Lion Heart? But Richard the Lion Heart uh, captured Muslim troops as prisoners, and he captured a lot of troops on his way. He wanted some leverage in negotiations when he had to face Saladin. But Saladin also had Christian prisoners himself. Um, so both sides had prisoners. So they were going to do some sort of exchange. Hey, I'll give you your troops back if you give me my troops back. But um, Saladin agreed. But Saladin kind of dragged his feet with the process. He was um, taking his time with the exchange. He wasn't really... Uh, it, was, it kind of sound, seemed like he was kind of trying to come up with a plan really fast to try to get his people back without giving back the Christians. Well, Richard the Lionheart then ordered a, to kill all 27 Muslim prisoners, and they did. So Richard the Lionheart did not uh, mess around. As soon as he felt that Saladin may have gotten cold feet, he killed all of his people. So the aftermath of all this is it was such the Third Crusade was such a bloody um, a bloody war that there was no clear victor. Both sides were worn down. There was almost nothing left to fight for. So they actually did reach a peace, a peace treaty. So they, they signed a peace treaty together. Um, the Crusaders got some coastal cities of Palestine, not specifically specifically Jerusalem, but they got some cities in the Holy Land to make them a little bit happy. They allowed to allow Christians to visit Jerusalem. So it, they were allowed to freely go there without the fear of getting robbed or killed. Um, this, this is kind of the agreement of uh, Saladin and the Lionheart. So um, the Crusades would kind of go on from here. There'll be some small battles from people that didn't want to honor the treaty, but this was the terms after the Third Crusade. All right, um, that is it for today. Um, we got the Crusades 1, 2, and 3 all in the books. Um, hopefully, feel free to go back in the slides and make sure you caught everything. All right, uh, we're all set. Until then, so long, everybody.